Hello. In this video, I'm going to present uh, an idea that I call your synthesis toolbox. Uh, I'm going to, pre to present a way that you can organize the reactions you're learning in organic chemistry to help you solve synthesis problems. Uh, this video is aimed at students who are partway through uh, a two-course undergraduate sequence. Uh, the, the target audience here if you remember that target audience, you've actually covered a number of organic reactions. And hopefully you're coming to the realization that molecules and their functional groups have characteristic reactions. And it's these characteristic reactions that are going to form part of your synthesis toolbox. And I'm asking you to think, uh, think of them in maybe three broad categories. Those reactions that are characteristic of a specific functional group. If you have an aldehyde in your starting molecule, starting material, what kind of chemistry can an aldehyde do? What are the characteristic reactions of an aldehyde? What other functional groups can an aldehyde be converted into? I also want you to think about reactions that generate specific functional groups. If your target compound has uh, an alkene in it, what are the reactions that generate alkenes as, as products? And then finally, I want you to think reactions that, about reactions that change the carbon skeletons. Uh, very frequently, you're, you know, and especially as you progress further, you're going to be dealing with synthesis problems where the number of carbon atoms change from the starting material to the target material. Uh, and you're going to be learning more and more different types of reactions that break and form carbon-carbon bonds. And so when you see a different number of carbons in the target material than you have in the starting material, you're going to want to look for one, one or more of those reactions to help you uh, get from point A to point B. So let's, let's look at some just real simple uh, examples. I'm not going to walk, go through any complete uh, synthesis problems here, but just to how, uh, examples of how you can start thinking about your synthesis toolbox in this way. So as an example of characteristic reactions of functional groups, uh, what if you were given this particular synthesis problem? You were interested in transforming cyclohexanol into trans 12 dibromocyclohexane. Um, and if we're thinking about the characteristic reactions of functional groups, you want to look at uh, those reactions that alcohols undergo. Uh, and so again, depending on where you are in your studies and what you've covered, you may recognize some or all of these reactions. If you haven't, don't recognize some of these reactions yet, don't worry. I'm sure they will be coming up soon. Right? So alcohols can undergo a dehydration reaction in the presence of strong concentrated acids, like uh, sulfuric acid. If the acid is a nucleophilic acid, so like HBr or hydrogen bromide, hydrogen chloride, you can do a substitution reaction and convert alcohols into alkyl halides. Alcohols can also be converted into ethers by deprotonating them with a really strong base, followed by an SN2 reaction with the appropriate alkyl halide. And then just one additional reaction of alcohols, and there are more out there. The alcohols can be oxidized to carbonyl compounds, and in this case, for, this, for cyclohexanol, oxidized to the ketone using chromium trioxide and acid. And again, depending on where you are in your studies uh, of organic chemistry, one of these might feel like it's a good first step because you know how to convert the product of that first step into something that looks more like the target compound. Uh, on this slide, I want to go through examples of synthesizing specific functional groups. What if you had cyclohexane and you were dying to have cyclohexane carbaldehyde? Uh, and so now we are interested in, in thinking about all the reactions that we know that might yield an aldehyde as the product. Uh, and again, depending on where you are in your study of organic chemistry, you may recognize some or all of these reactions. Some of these are so come up a little bit later in, in uh the second semester of a two semester sequence. But here we go. Um, one way that you can make aldehydes are by ozonolysis of uh, an appropriate alkene. Uh, alkenes undergo ozonolysis to make aldehydes and ketones and they form aldehydes if there's a hydrogen at one of those carbons. 
Also, primary alcohols can be oxidized to aldehydes using uh, the special oxidizing agent PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate. And some functional groups like nitriles can be reduced to aldehyde using diisobutyl aluminum hydride and other reagents. Uh, and again, you might look at these three reactions, and there might be more, and one of them might resonate with you uh, as, oh, I can see how to make one of these uh, reactants uh, from my starting material cyclohexane. Finally, let's talk about some reactions that change the carbon skeleton. Um, and I'm just going to review some of those that are most commonly covered, excuse me, that are most commonly covered in undergraduate courses. Uh, the most common way to breaking carbon-carbon bonds is through oxidative cleavage. Uh, and usually that requires uh, an alkene or an alkyne, and usually that requires ozonolysis. So ozonolysis is one way that you can uh, break carbon-carbon bonds and therefore reduce the number of carbon atoms that you have. And ozonolysis works on alkenes, making aldehydes or ketones. It works on alkynes, making carboxylic acids. Uh, there are other oxidative cleavage reactions that work on other kinds of functional groups. For example, the sodium periodate uh, oxidative cleavage will cleave uh, diols uh, that are next to each other. So, uh, you know, they're called uh, vicinal diols. They're right next to each other uh, into aldehydes and ketones. And again, depending on where you are in your study, you might recognize these reactions or you might, you know, recognize ways of generating these compounds from your starting material, or you might recognize ways, uh, and I'm not giving a specific example here, but you might recognize ways to convert any of these targets or any of these products into your targets. On the next several slides, I'm going to share six ways that, uh, are commonly presented to form carbon-carbon bonds. Uh, again, depending on where you are in your studies and what sequence you're going through things, you may recognize some or all of these. Um, the first one is alkyne alkylation. Terminal alkynes can be deprotonated to form acetylide anions that are nucleophiles and react with alkyl halides, add carbons uh, to a chain. Uh, second is the Grignard reaction. Alkyl halides can react with magnesium to form nucleophiles that react with carbonyl compounds and make alcohols in which there are new carbon-carbon bonds. The Diels-Alder reaction is a reaction that forms cyclohexenes. Uh, and so Diels-Alder reaction is a great way to put together really complicated structures pretty quickly, but it's limited in its formation. It only can be used to form six-membered rings. Uh, the Friedel-Crafts reaction is a reaction between an aromatic ring and an alkyl halide or acyl halide as an electrophile, uh, forming a new carbon-carbon bond. Uh, and the mechanism actually looks a lot like an SN2 reaction, at least at the alkyl halide. Uh, usually towards the end of the second semester of organic chemistry, you start talking about the aldol reaction. This is a reaction uh, of aldehydes and ketones uh, with themselves. One molecule of an aldehyde becomes a nucleophile, another becomes an electrophile, and a new carbon-carbon bond is formed between them. And there are a number of variations of the aldol that use other functional groups. And then finally, the Wittig reaction uh, takes the alkyl halide, which is normally an electrophile, uh, reacts it with triphenylphosphine followed by a strong base to make something that is a nucleophile and can react with carbonyl compounds and make alkenes. And this is just a, a start to the types of reactions that are out there to form carbon-carbon bonds. A lot of active research, even today in the organic chemistry world, is in the you know is is going towards new reactions that form carbon-carbon bonds, especially reactions that are tolerant of multiple kinds of functional groups. In the next several videos, I'm going to walk through different kinds of synthesis problem scenarios, starting with the simplest uh, and working up to more complex uh, synthesis problems. Thank you for watching.